Okay, so Dr. Nicola Tallis, thank you for joining me and um, thank you for giving up some of your time to speak to all the HistFest viewers on YouTube um, today. Thank you, you so much for inviting me, it's a huge pleasure. Oh, you're very welcome, you're very welcome. It's long overdue, I think. Um, wow. But today, I think, obviously you are a prolific writer and I was thinking about this before, your first book came out in 2016, the same year as mine. And since yeah. then, I've done Sweet FA. <laughs> we share an agent. I have done stuff. My book is on the way. But you've had, you've written three books. It's just crazy. I have, but you have also organised a history festival, so you, and been studying for your PhD. So you've done quite a bit. <laughs> You'll be inspired because you've actually completed your PhD in that time as well. So. Yeah. I know, but do you know what? I've, I've had to give up a lot in order to do it. I think I've literally had no life for the past three years because I've been just sort of glued to the computer. But no, <laughs> it's been really good fun and I'm really grateful to have had the chance to have done what I've done and to, um, to write three books. So yeah, I, um, I feel really lucky and really excited and, and pleased with them actually so yeah it's gone quite well <laughs> they're really they're really good and just for if there are any any viewers that maybe haven't read nicola's books yet i'm going to give the titles of all three i've written them down because there's so many the first one was crown of blood and that's about the life of lady jane gray second one elizabeth's rival is about the life of lettuce knollis have i pronounced her surname correctly there knollis no. It's oh well there we go <laughs> no okay <laughs> mistake yeah <laughs> um and then your most recent book is uncrowned queen which is the story of the life of margaret beaufort i'm yes. assuming i've pronounced that correctly yeah um, that's good <laughs> <laughs> so first of all i wanted to ask you how you came to write about the area that you that you write about so there's lots of women during the late medieval and um tudor period what what interested you in that to start with yeah i mean it's such a fascinating period of history and it is a period i think that's quite highly saturated you know everyone seems to love the tudors there's this um, this unquen unquenchable thirst, if you like, for them. And it was with that in mind that I actually began researching Lady Jane Grey's mother, Lady Frances Grey. Mm. And I got as far as to write a whole draft manuscript of a book about her. And it was, um, I was really pleased with myself. I'd, I'd done it all in about three years. And, um, and then I showed it to my then agent who was like, oh, well, this is great, but I think actually you'd be better off writing about Lady Jane Grey. Um, so <laughs> it was really frustrating at the time because I spent such a long time researching <laughs> her mother. And it was, for me, I was really interested in telling stories and writing about women whose voices perhaps hadn't been heard so much mm -hmm. and or at all actually. So that was what appealed to me with, um, with Jane's mother. But when I went and started delving back into the archives, looking at Jane Grey, I was really surprised to find that there was quite a lot of material that hadn't been used in um, published biographies of her before. So there was definitely a story there to be told. And that was a really great opportunity for me, I think. So, so obviously you have three... Um amazing books but I just wondered for the purposes of this short video whether we could unpick the life of Margaret Beaufort a little bit because she's somebody I don't know why but for some reason she's piqued my interest and um, she just seems to be such an extraordinary woman so who who was she and you know what where, where did she come from and and um, what was her life story yeah, so Margaret is a really, really fascinating character and lots of people might be familiar with her or think that they already know her story because she features very heavily in Philippa Gregory's The White Queen and The Red Queen, um, not always necessarily in a favourable light. Um, <laughs> and lots of people also recognise her or identify her solely as being Henry VII's mother. But actually, she was a woman whose story deserves to be told in its own right. Um, she was descended from Edward III, so she did have a trickle of royal blood in her veins uh, because her great-grandfather great -grandfather was John of Gaunt, the third surviving son of Edward III. 
And, um, if, but the problem was, was that she was descended um, from John of Gaunt through his relationship with Catherine Swinford, who was first of all his mistress um, and, and then his wife. So there was always this kind of stigma of illegitimacy that stuck to the Beauforts throughout their life, even though they were legally legitimated by Richard II. Okay, and then the, the, the famous story, I suppose, or the infamous story about her is the fact that she was so young when she married, wasn't she? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, she was um, she was 12 years old when she married Edmund Tudor, who was actually her second husband. And yeah, within a matter of months, she was she was pregnant and gave birth at the age of 13, painfully at a young age. Yeah, gosh, that's awful. And of, of course, this child was well, went on to become Henry the seventh. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So she's in a way the kind of mother of the Tudor dynasty, would that be fair? Yeah, no, absolutely. I think she deserves credit for, I think we can safely say in many respects that she was the founder of the Tudor dynasty and yes, yeah, certainly the mother. Okay, okay. And um, just going to the archives then, because obviously you've spent a lot of time, you know, going through source material, not just for these books, but also for your PhD as well, which is your PhD topic is on um, jewels of the medieval period, isn't it? Or royal jewels. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's right. So I was just wondering, have you, uh, have you had or what is the most exciting discovery that you've made in the archive? And what's it like? Where were you? And, and what did it feel like when it happened? Oh, do you know, that's, oh, that's a really tricky question. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I have to think of that now. Oh, do you know what? It might sound a bit sad, but this was my genuinely one of my most exciting discoveries was when I was in the National Archives, um, probably in the summer of 2018, I think. And I was going through the account books of Anne of Cleves. And um, even though she was only queen for six months, mm. they're really detailed and really fascinating. And... I was looking at the way in which she was spending all of this money on jewellery and employing all of these goldsmiths and there was this one entry that stood out and it was the fact that she had a parrot and I just loved that. She <laughs> had a seed, the wife who so many people overlook and she had a pet parrot. <laughs> <laughs> and she was paying for this parrot to be transported between the royal palaces so she was obviously you know a fond animal lover so <laughs> yeah I love that <laughs> that's brilliant I really warmed to her actually especially after um watching um six the musical have you seen it no not oh, yet well. I'm desperate to see it oh it's, it's so 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 good it's really it's, it's a feminist thing and um, it's really good and um the music is great and if anyone's watching <laughs> do google the music for the, fix the musical after this um all right i'm going to ask you a, a tricky question now so you're whisked away in a time machine you're told that you will be the maid you will be a maid for the rest of your days but you have to be made to one of the three women that you focused your research on, one of the three women in your, in your three books. Who would it be, why, and what would you do to cope? <laughs> <laughs> do you know what? This is actually quite an easy one. And I would go with Margaret Beaufort because all of the accounts and records that we have suggest that she treated her staff really well and that they were really fond of her. Whereas I think Lady Jane Grey and Latisse would have been quite high maintenance. I don't think if I'd, I don't think I'd have coped well with that. Whereas Margaret, I mean, she was great. She was so generous to her servants. She gave them jewels and she made sure that they were well fed and well paid. So I don't think I'd even have to worry about how I how I'd cope. I think I'd just I think I'd be I'd be loving it. <laughs> oh, well, that's that's good then. So Margaret, all the way. Um, and what's that? <laughs> What's next for you then? Are, you, are we going to see this biography that you uh, wrote but it didn't come to fruition or are you moving on to a different area or can you even say? Yeah well I am working at the moment at trying to turn my PhD thesis into a book so we can well fingers crossed we can um, we can hope that that will happen quite soon um, I am working on another book 
but it's it's going to be a few years until that's that's ready i'm not going to be um yeah i'm i'm not going to be sacrificing my life quite so much this time so uh yeah but i can't say what it's about just yet oh okay intriguing well nicola on that note i shall leave you to the rest of your evening um, and thank you ever so much for joining me today pleasure thank you so much for having me